All right, guys, so now that we got a wood stove in the new workshop, now we got to be able to make fuel. So we got our first decent sized project in here. Um, this old wood splitter has been used and abused and neglected, and uh, it's time to bring it back to life the right way. So this uh, splitter is actually homemade. It's been in the family a long, long time, and uh, obviously it has lived outside a long, long time. Um, the original engine for it is actually sitting on the cart right here. And uh, it got stuck, assuming it's got a stuck exhaust valve, as it's all full of crap in there. Um, so uh, when I was a young lad, I began the process of transplanting this other 10 horse Briggs and Stratton onto it. And uh, was gonna convert it over to belt drive, as this was originally set up with a number 60 chain drive. Um, and uh, didn't finish it. So there it sat and the splitter needed to be run. So it was then converted to run off the quick disconnects on the back of the tractor. And we ran it that way for a while. And then it just kind of got parked in the dingle weeds and that was the end of it. So plan is to get this thing running under its own power again and set it back up to be an independent unit. And obviously we got some engine options here. Um, both of these Briggs and Stratton engines turn 270 degrees and stop, assuming that both of them now have a stuck exhaust valve at least. Um, it would be pretty cool to get it going again with the, you know, the same engine or same type of engine that was on it. So we're gonna attempt that first, see if we can get one of these to turn a full rotation and. Uh, you know, kind of see if there's a snowball's chance that we'll be able to get one running. And then the fallback plan is we have a 12 horse iron block Kohler. Um, we'll transplant that onto it. Um, that being said, I've never heard a single one of these engines run. Uh, the Kohler makes a full rotation and has compression and it's a Kohler. So I'm thinking it's probably good, um, but you never know. But, uh, not quite sure what we're going to be getting into here. So the first order of business is going to be uh, trying to get one of these engines to pop off and run. And then once we get to that point, um, we'll start going about putting a drive back on it. And uh, I am going to set it back up with a chain again, just like it was originally. So I guess we'll get started on one of these engines and uh, kind of see what we end up with here. Well, we got it up in our teeth and uh, got the exhaust off and uh, it snapped immediately, which is not terribly surprising because it's paper thin. Um, and we spent a bunch of time using a screwdriver for its unintended purpose, a chisel, and got uh, most of the crud out of the uh, exhaust port. And if I, there we go. And there's the stem for the exhaust valve. Um, the valve is shut, which could be a saving grace for us. I wish that would stay focused on there so you can see it. Um, I'm gonna go in there and spend a bit more time scraping around and trying to get some of the corrosion out and then uh, hit it with some penetrating oil and let it soak for a while. If, uh, if we can break that valve loose with it together, that'd be awesome. That would be awesome. And then uh, we can move forward with the easier stuff, such as getting spark and rebuilding the carburetor and etc. etc. So we'll scrape this for a bit and kind of see where we end up. We'll catch back up with you in a bit. One eternity later. All right, so a whole bunch of uh, time later and a lot of uh, patience with a dental pick. And uh, we've got this, I think, as good as it's going to get. Uh, most of the scale off the floor of the port, um, most of the scale out from around the stem of the valve, and now the penetrating oil should be able to get where it's supposed to go, hopefully. So we're going to soak it up with some uh, liquid wrench penetrant and uh, let her sit for a while, see what happens. Maybe we'll get lucky.
Well, with a uh, bunch of heat cycling and uh, soaking it with uh, penetrating oil, we got the valve open. However, it's still open. So the valve stem doesn't look terrible um, below the guide, which you know we kind of expected or hoped for at least. But it's uh, still not good enough to shut on its own. So we're gonna keep heat cycling it a bit and uh, soaking it up with penetrant and see if we can get it to to shut. Um, if not, then you know we'll have to pull the head off it and deal with it. But uh, it is what it is. In the interim, while that's soaking, um, started uh, cleaning out the. Uh, fan housing on this thing and uh, I mean there is literally like uh, vegetation in here and dirt and mouse nest and all kinds of various and sundry things so I've already vacuumed this once this is the second go around so I had to share it with you guys <laughs> I, just, I cannot believe the amount of crap that's coming out of here but uh, I don't have any recollection of this engine sitting in the dirt but apparently it did but, uh, so we're gonna keep cleaning that out and uh, you know, eventually if this engine becomes more promising, we'll pull the fan shroud off and fabricate a patch for that rotted off section on the bottom and uh, keep trudging away here. Uh, while I was dinking around as well, I got this, uh, where is it, this stump of pipe that uh, sheared off out of there. Basically, I just took a, uh, uh, I don't know what you would call that, a pie file, a pie shaped file, a pointy file, a file, and uh, ground a notch into it basically cut this through with the with the edge of the file until I cut a notch into the threads on the uh, cylinder and uh, then just kind of got under it with a screwdriver and started folding it out of there um, and it popped out so I went in and cleaned up the threads as best I could uh, but <laughs> they're not in very good shape so you know um, it's another day of progress so we'll keep picking at it and Probably keep picking at them both and just kind of see where we end up. And, uh, you know, if these engines become a lost cause, we've always got the backup Kohler hanging out over there. But uh, I think these old Briggs are neat. So we're still going to keep plugging away and see if we can do something with them. The other thing, um, chain. This is the number 60 chain that was on there before. Um, it's uh, stiff. It basically there's sections that are frozen right up on it I uh, I don't know if it's salvageable or not but uh, there's not a convenient place locally to buy number 60 by the foot um, the only place that I've found it uh, thus far you know readily available is uh, tractor supply and uh, they've only got it in 10 foot lengths and I do not need 10 feet of it so um, I'm gonna screw with this one a little bit we're going to throw it in a pan here and soak it in penetrating oil and see if we can loosen it up. Um, yeah, I know the old school way is to, uh, you know, throw it in a pan of uh, diesel, but diesel is really expensive right now. So we're going to, we're going to spray some penetrant on it and, you know, there's some, there's some ATF in here too. Maybe that'll help. Um, see what happens. You know, if we can save it, we'll run it. If not, then uh, we'll keep hunting around and uh, maybe I'll order a length online. I don't know. We'll figure something out the next day all right so uh we had a small mishap um two of the uh i don't know what you want to call them nut certs on the uh on the case on the fan blower housing this doohickey uh started spinning in there so we had to cut the heads of the bolts off but uh the rest of it came apart pretty easy so there it is um the bore in it i don't know if that's going to focus in there. A little bit of pitting, a little bit of scoring. I mean, it is what it is, but, uh, you know, I mean, it'll run. It's a Briggs, but, uh, yeah, there it is. There's the hung exhaust valve. So we're going to get in there and, uh, see if we can pound that shut and, uh, cycle it a couple times. See if it frees up. 346 minutes later. All right, well, I think we got her, or at least as well as we're going to get it. Um, cleaned the, all the chunks of rust and other BS off the uh, top end here and uh, tapped that valve shut and cranked the engine over and pushed it open and lubed it and tapped it shut and cranked the engine over and lubed it and tapped it shut and about 
you know, 11 million times. And uh, yeah, we uh, got it to a point now where um, I think, you know, it's probably about as good as it's gonna get. I suppose next steps would be to uh, investigate the coil, which does not look good. Uh, yeah, not optimistic there. And uh, same with the condenser. I'm sure that's shot too. So gonna have to do some homework and uh, see if we can get parts for this thing. Um, this is one of those tough gambles where it's like, well, you know, don't really want to spend a bunch of money on a new coil and new condenser and new points and all that stuff and then have it be a giant pile of garbage that burns a half a quart of oil every log you split. But, uh, you know, got to do something. So we're going to do some testing here and see what we're going to do. One week later. All right, so we got a fire lit and we've got parts. So after a lot of agonizing, um, went on the old eBay, and unfortunately they're from China, but uh, nothing you can do about it. I searched tirelessly for a uh, coil option that wasn't, and uh, didn't come up with anything. But anyhow, this is a uh, solid state coil that is designed to eliminate the points. Um, so looks like a very straightforward conversion. Should be a uh, much more reliable ignition and uh, got a couple of new head gaskets. Uh, one of the ones that I found I think would work, but uh, these were new old stock. They were on eBay for like five bucks. So it's like, how can you beat that? <clears throat> so we'll just slap them on there and not worry about whether it's any good or not. So when you're putting these coils on, you want to make sure uh, you got a good ground and whatnot. Uh, this bracket was heavily corroded, so I just uh, like to take a file and uh, gently file these surfaces to uh, clean them up. Obviously you don't want to take a ton of material off, but uh, you do want it nice and clean. So we got these cleaned up and uh, I'll grab the coil and slap that thing on there. So just a quick tip here, um, we got the uh, new coil just kind of setting up there. Uh, you need to set the air gap between the armature and flywheel magnet. Um, the spec for this engine is eight to ten thousandths. What I like to do just to keep life simple is to find something, whether it's a business card or, or whatever. Found this piece of packaging here, it's nine thousandths thick. So I cut that up and I'm just going to slide this in between the uh, armature and the flywheel and push the coil down on it, tighten it down, pull them out, good to go. Makes it quick and easy. And here's the coil in place uh, with the shims. And we'll just toss the bolts in there. I like to put a little dab of never sees, uh, especially these ones because they're going into aluminum. So we'll just put a wee little skosh on there and slide these in. And there you go. We got our crusty bolts in there. We'll just slide the shims out. Gapped. Look at that. Done. Well, I wanted to check for spark, and uh, if you turn the engine over the way you're supposed to, there's no spark. But if you turn it backwards, you probably can't see it because I'm shaking, but there's spark. So I followed the uh, blatant instructions on this mag that say this side out, and it appears to be backwards. So I'm going to pop it off and turn it around the other way and see what that does. All right, so we got the ignition coil on there backwards and we got spark. I uh, also did some digging around online and apparently this is not uncommon with these engines. Um, another guy uh, is doing the same thing, so it puts it on there backwards, runs great. So I have no idea, <laughs> but uh, we'll try it, see what it does. All right, just a quick update. Got the coil gapped and mounted up. Um, I did run a hone uh, through the bore, and that spot of pitting is still there. I mean, it's pitting, so. But uh, we know that we don't um, have any high spots, at least. Um, I don't want to go too crazy with the hone. 
especially with the piston still in there. But uh, just want to make sure that, uh, you know, like I said, no high spots, nothing the rings are going to catch on. Um, start cleaning up the uh, cylinder head, the combustion chamber. Um, a lot of oil deposits in here, so that's a little concerning that this engine uh, might be a smoker. So, but we'll see. Not going to know unless you put it together and fire it up. So we'll keep trudging forward and see what we got. So now, since we got spark, uh, we need a carburetor. So we're going to uh, try to get this uh, petrified carburetor apart and see how bad it is. And if it's terrible, we got another one in pieces we might be able to work with. But got to see what we got first. So let's get this thing torn apart. Well, um, <laughs> uh, it probably doesn't bode well for the condition of this car, but uh, we'll keep digging into it, see how much worse it gets. Bye. Bye. So it's time to dive into this carburetor. Anyway, here it is. Um, like I said, you know, somewhat disappointing, but uh, you got to do what you can. Um, it's obviously completely um, unavoidable sometimes, but uh, you at least try to pay attention to uh, who the distributor is. Um, if it's a holdings company or something like that, totally avoid it and uh, try to at least get this stuff from a local supplier. Onward. We got the cylinder head uh, setting on there with the uh, shroud and don't forget to never seize living crap out of all your bolts. Doubles as a lubricant, it's a win. All right, we got the uh, cylinder head sitting on here. We got the bolts run most of the way down here. Um, uh, we're not gonna torque them just yet because we gotta put the fuel tank on. Before I put the fuel tank on, I gotta clean it. Um, I pulled the uh, sediment bowl off it because it was all kinds of nasty. And uh, we'll get to cleaning that out. And I think the sediment bowl I'm going to go ahead and replace. I happen to have a new old stock unit right here. Uh, so I lubed up the, uh, whatever you want to call it, the shaft for that. Um, hopefully it'll work out okay. And uh, I'm going to pull this one apart and then use the globe clamp off it for this one. And, of course, use the... Uh, Barb fitting out of there as well. Slam that in that one. Uh, we'll get the fuel tank cleaned out and uh, keep trudging along here. So if you guys want to knock a whole bunch of crud out of a fuel tank quick, here's how you do it. Get yourself a whole bunch of uh, steel ball bearings. And we'll just start chucking them in there. And we'll grab the fuel cap. What's left of it. And then we pretend that this is a giant maraca. 3,000 whoop who's later. So after a whole bunch of shaking, that's just uh, what came out. Just uh, trying to get the balls back out of there again. And uh, you can see all the, all the loose stuff that it knocked off the walls in there. I put all the balls... Uh, in the box here because they're dirty and then uh, we'll clean the balls off before we put them away because you always want to keep your balls clean um, and yeah we'll take this tank and uh, blow it out um, flush it out with some gasoline see how it looks 24 hours later all right guys pause and a quick update got the uh, fuel tank flushed out um, got the fan shroud on got the head on um, need to final torque the head, but can't do that till the motor's bolted down. Um, got another governor spring we're going to try out here. Uh, I don't know. Seems good. We'll try it. Um, now we're at the point where I'm missing the governor linkage. Um, so we're going to go and rob the governor linkage off the other one. And we're going to stab it on this one. And I think that I'm just going to go right ahead and uh, be optimistic and uh, put the whole intake tube and everything right on here and uh you know what the heck why not so we'll go get that stuff ripped off the other engine and uh keep on trudging forward here later all right well we got it pretty well together um before we get too crazy here we're gonna pop the uh drain plug out and see if there's water in the base 
Um, if it's just oil and it's blacker than the Ace of Spades, we'll probably fire it up, see what it does, not waste the oil. And uh, yeah. Yep, that's oil and it's blacker than the Ace of Spades, so we're going to send it. I'm going to pop this thing off and uh, see if it runs worth a hoot. If it does, we'll give her an oil change. All right, guys, she's bolted down. Got a splash of fuel in it, not a whole ton. So I guess first we'll crack the petcock open and see if it vomits fuel all over the place. Sediment bowl is clear, that's a good start. Not seeing any leaks. Filters filling up. All right, I guess that's it. We'll uh, grab my uh, earmuffs here, because get smart this time, try to reduce the tinnitus and uh, set the GoPro up and see what this thing does. Alright guys, so this is running um, nicely, except that I haven't been able to get the governor figured out. And I've been screwing around with the springs on this and stuff, and can't understand why it... And then uh, it hit me like a ton of bricks, and I don't know why I didn't notice this before, but if you can peek down... Come on, focus. If you can peek down in there, the uh, con throttle control is on the right side, and on the original carb... It's on the left side. So, um, that would explain it. I feel kind of foolish for not noticing that, but uh, you know, it happens. So we're gonna pull the carburetor back off again and uh, see if I can take the throttle shaft apart and flip it around backwards and see if that fixes it. Now we got the carburetor off and before I tore it apart, I just wanted to give you a, a clear image on the difference between these two configurations here. You can see the uh, very clearly the throttle shaft is uh, Oh, you know, about 180 degrees out or better. So uh, we're going to take the throttle shaft out of this. Unfortunately, uh, this one has a uh, roll pin in here, so i got to drive that roll pin out and uh, then take the throttle plate out. Just take that, uh, get my finger in the right spot, take that Phillips head screw out, take the throttle plate out. We should be able to slide the throttle shaft right out, spin it 180, slide it back in again, put it all back together again. Hopefully, hopefully that'll work. 20 minutes later. All right, we got it back together. We got the throttle oriented in the right direction. Got the stop put back on. Da 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 da. So, go we'll slam this back on the engine and fire it up and see what happens. Tuned on the carb a little bit more and uh, 
played with that governor spring a bit and the governor position and you know I guess it's all right we're kind of guessing here so got it running at a moderate rpm um, not really sure how fast this pump is going to want to run but again you know just kind of winging it seeing how it goes so I guess now uh, we got to try to get that uh, chain freed up and well see if we can get it freed up and start moving forward with uh, getting the hoses put back on because like I said uh, in an earlier part this is uh, configured for the tractor at the moment so I've got the uh, the old hoses off it there's another one laying on the floor there safely we're gonna pop those back on there and uh, yeah make this thing split wood yet well there it is got the chain all on it got the engine bolted down firm dumped a couple gallons of hydraulic fluid in it guess we'll pop it off and see what it does be interesting to see how many leaks we got Well, there you have it. It runs. Um, it doesn't give you tinnitus anymore. The cylinder goes in and out. It does the things that it's supposed to do and stuff. And it's rusty and it's crusty. What more could you ask for? This has been a fun, you know, let's see if we can make it work project to pick at during the winter months. And uh, we're coming out of it with a functional piece of equipment. So what the heck? At this point, um, I think it's time to get it the heck out of the shop, clean up the god-awful mess that we've made in here, and uh, we'll probably run it up to the farm and uh, fabricate some gussets for underneath this motor plate here. As you probably saw in the video with the hydraulic pump load on it, that uh, motor plate flexes pretty bad. So I'm going to get that stiffened up a bit and take care of some other loose ends, do something about that fuel cap leak. Um, and make sure that we can run this thing somewhat reliably. And that'll be that. As always, thanks for watching. Not the most exciting video you've seen, I'm sure, but uh, you know, this has been one of those projects that I kind of wanted to see if I could get it going for some time now, and I thought I'd take you along for the ride. Till next time. Mm -hmm.